I have a couple guests with me today. I'm excited to have Jim and Andrew with me, and, and they're a part of a, of a brand new church that's come together over the course of the last couple of years. And it really is a part of, of an existing church, a, a, a historic, I would say, free church in St. Louis Park, Minnesota, and that was struggling a bit, coming to the point where we're seeing attendance was lower and, and sort of mission and vision, what we're here for, wasn't quite what it once was. And, and recognizing what do we do with that. And then Andrew, who was pastoring a brand new church plan in the same community. And, and the opportunity is they were wrestling with, so as a new church plant, what's the future for us? The future for an existing church being a little bit of, well, we're not so sure what God might have the future for a new church, what might we become? And God in his providence has led you together. So, Jim, let me start with you. T tell us a little bit about what was going on at St. Louis Park Free Church and what led you to the point of saying, hey, we need to do something. Everyone that was within the church body, of which average age, well over 50, every one of them sensed trouble. At the elder meetings, it just became a, what are we going to do to avoid closing the doors? It was that serious. It was one of those situations where um, at least the elders felt as though we need to step aside and let God start to work. It sounds like almost the, the leaders came to the point of saying, you know what, we either change or die because something had to happen to make, to make that work. And, and, and now, Andrew, it shifted in that point. You, you connected in some way with the church here. Tell us a little bit about what was going on in your church plant and what led you toward this connection with this aging historic free church. So we were in the same community, same denomination, and we had built a relationship with this church. As Jim mentioned, we were renting here Sunday evenings for a period of time as a new church plant. Then we moved out, we found our own space, and we just built this relationship with this church and, and really respected them and cared for them and saw the church dwindling and dying. and. Kind of in, in my heart, I cared for the church. I had met people here, I cared for them. Um, they cared for us, we felt that. And as they went through their story, they had an interim pastor who said change or die, and he and I began to build a relationship together. And as, as we built relationships between our two churches, we, you know, in my heart, I thought, we have a young, growing church plant that's reaching new people in St. Louis Park. And praise God for that, that's an incredible thing. But here's an older, faithful, dying church with faithful saints that that, have, um, that they're looking for new life. And it almost seemed irresponsible or ungodly to say, well, forget you. For, forget you. We have a new calling, a new mission, and a new people group, and we're going to watch you suffer and die. And so kind of as we realized that, God just knit our, knit our hearts together, and we began praying together and seeking his leading. And, um, and he made it very clear that we would be better together than apart. And that certainly is what has happened because as the two congregations have come together to form now Park Community Church here in St. Louis Park, uh, I know just from my own experience, I've worshiped with you a couple of times, God's doing some very exciting things here in the church. And I I'd just love to hear from you. What excites you about what you see God doing as he's transformed this work by the work of his spirit and his word and what he's doing among his people? Uh, Jim, tell us what excites you. You know, it's almost like I can hardly wait for Sunday mornings. It's really the truth. Wow. The excitement is, comes from how welcome people mm -hmm. uh, feel, and how loved they feel. The older people that were in the dying church, they've got smiles on their faces as they watch these little children of which it's growing in leaps and bounds. And these little children are age seven and below. We don't even have a youth group yet. It's a resurrection of a church body. That, that, that's, that's a great picture, isn't it? Sort of the resurrection of what God's doing. Hey, Andrew, what excites you? You're, you're the pastor of this new church. Love, tell us from your heart. Yeah, it's incredible to see, to, to be a part of what God has done here over the years. I mean, this church is over 70 years old and to see some of the faithful saints that have been here for 70 or more years wow. and to just see them embrace us and welcome mm -hmm. us and, mm -hmm. and put up with change. I mean, we have, we have a lady who's turning 100 in October who sits second pew and we have a full worship band and she's there, second pew, doesn't know half the songs, misses the organ, but she's there with a smile on her face, showing us just the, the humility and the love that, um, that so, it's so Christ-like. And then we have this, just this vibrant growth that we've had in our church. We're able to engage with our neighbors. The neighbors who live around the building see that something's different and our people are mobilized to go out and to make disciples. And 
we talk often about being neighbors and witnesses of Jesus in our spheres of influence, yeah. and people are actually going out and doing that. It's incredible. Well, a Andrew, what you're seeing happen here, though, really, is this idea of disciple-making, which is more people coming to know and follow Jesus as you see people come to Christ, and more of them being more like Him. Yeah. And there's a contagious side to that, and you see what's happening in this in this new sort of united church in what God is doing as he moves forward. Yeah. So as I think about what it means for us to see churches transformed, existing and new, to see God at work transforming people's lives and therefore seeing ministries grow and transform, we do it all to the glory of God. And this story is one we're starting to see happen in multiple places across the free church. And I'm excited to hear some of your stories of what God's doing to transform ministries in your communities to the glory of God.